Hello, physical scientists. This is Miss R, and I have heard that many of you are struggling to make graphs for the Momentum Lab 2.08. This is also a great way to make graphs for other labs. So I'm going to quickly show you how to use Google Docs, Google Sheets to be more exact, and how to make a graph. You can see that I've gone in here and put in some of the data for the release point for the Momentum Lab. But for other labs, this will be your independent variable. So whatever you decide before the experiment is your independent variable. In this particular case, it happens to be the release point for dropping a ball down a ramp. And over here, you want to put your dependent variables. In this case, for the Momentum Lab, we are testing different kinds of balls and their momentum, which of course is based on their weight. Or excuse me, their mass more correctly. So this is another dependent variable. Often in experiments, you'll have more than one dependent variable. So make a new column for each dependent variable. Each of these columns will make a line in your graph. So if you're testing different types of equipment or different um, masses, uh, put them each as their own column. Each de dependent variable gets their own column. Now, how do you add a graph, you ask? You go in here to insert, and you want to insert a chart into the sheet here. Now, what first pops up is not really what we want. We don't want this type of chart. So we're going to go in here, click on charts, and what we want is a scatter plot. So we've so far gone to insert, insert chart, and we're doing scatter plot. Insert chart, scatter plot. Now that looks more like what we like. Here's the dependent variables, steel ball, plastic ball, golf ball and they each show up in a different color. Perfect. But before we say insert, we want to customize a little bit. We need a chart title, and we need titles on the left vertical axis and the horizontal axis. So the chart title can be momentum of different sports balls, or whatever is appropriate for the lab that you want to graph. Then we go down here. Don't click on any of those features. We're going to click on horizontal axis first. And just to reinforce that you want to put your independent variable on the x-axis, I'm going to put independent variable here, and I'm going to put in the release point. You don't have to put independent variable in your title. Then if I want to do the left vertical axis, the y-axis here, I have to click on this menu here, right here, where it says axis. And just to emphasize, this is the dependent variable, or variables in this case. And this is cup distance. We rolled balls and they rolled into a cup and the cup slid. So we can play around with these min and max if we want to adjust the numbers here, but we don't need to right now. If you want your graph to not start at zero, you can put in a minimum of like 10 or 100 or whatever you need and then put in a maximum as well. These grid lines govern how many grid lines show up. I'm going to leave them set the way they are because that works out pretty well for what we need. 
If you want to change the number of grid lines, um, you can simply click on this. It doesn't, it's not the units, it's the number of lines that appear. And if you want to change the colors of the symbols, you can certainly do that if I want to change, say, steel ball to maybe a gray color to remind me that it's a steel ball, I can do that. I kind of like the blue, so I'm going to go back to blue here. So now we've customized our graph and we can hit insert. And there we go. Now if you want to put this in your lab report, you can go up and you can say copy chart and it'll copy to the web clipboard. That might work for you. I did not have luck with that. So I, what I did is save image and it saved it to my downloads. This is what it looks like on a Mac. Yours is going to look a little bit different. It can You can either save it to your downloads or you can just open it with whatever preview program you have and then you can name it whatever you want. And then when you go to your Word document or whatever you're working with, you can import this as an image. You can import your graph as an image. I'll show you how to do that in just a second in a Word document or a Google Doc. Hello, Boo. This is just a general way uh, to insert an image. Obviously, your lab report will not look like this. I'm working in Google Docs. Um, this is a Google Docs document. Um, I can go, if I want to get my graph in my Google Docs document, of course you would have more to your lab report than this, I would go insert and I would go insert image. And this is similar to what you would do in OpenOffice or uh, Word as well. You want to insert image and then you can drag an image here or you can choose an image to upload. I'm not going to show you my downloads folder, but if I click on this, this will open up different options for me to grab an image from. I would click on this, I would look at my downloads folder, which is where my graph from just a few minutes ago showed up, and that graph would pop right up in there. You can see that my image is uploading, and there it is. I just went to my downloads folder and found the chart that I just saved and there it is. Now if I want to do a best fit line, I'll have to insert drawing or insert uh, insert special character and then I'll have to pick a line don't really want an arrow but something like this you can insert that or I believe you can use the draw tool to draw a line I'll show you how to do it in Word here in just a second so here I've cut and pasted my graph into a Word document and if you're in Word you can use the shape tool here on a PC it will be under the insert menu go insert about right up here insert shape if you click on the shape menu you can get lines and you can draw a best fit line here try to make it through most of the points and we want to predict where it's going to go how far the cup's going to roll if we have a 40 centimeter release point in this case. So we use a line of best fit to predict where the line is going to go. And a best fit line should try to go through as many points as possible. Some of those points will be above and some will be below. So here this is pretty good because there are three points below the line and two points above. So I can extend this line a little bit. It doesn't necessarily have to go through zero and I can predict about where the 40 is going to go. Now please don't use this graph because the data I used 
I totally made up for the plastic ball and the golf ball. And I did that on purpose so that you would not use that data. I will know that your data looks a little too perfect if you use the data that I used in this particular lab. So don't use the same data. Do put in your own data in a spreadsheet and make your graph in Google Docs if you don't have Excel. So just to recap, if you want to make a graph using Google Docs, particularly Google Sheet, it's the green one, you can go and put in your independent variable here in the A column, put the name and then put your data, and put any dependent variables in different columns here. Use the insert menu. You want to insert a chart, and then when you get to the charts menu, you want to go to charts and go to scatter plot. So insert, chart, go to the charts menu and choose scatter plot. That'll be what you want for most of your data. And then scatter. Oh, if you get this message, you want to go out here and you want to select everything. Select all the data you want to graph. Then go back to insert, chart, charts, scatter plot. Click on this scatter at the top here. And then go in and customize to get your chart title. And then go down to the axes, do the horizontal axis, put in a title, and then switch it to the left vertical axis and put in a different title and you can play with the grid lines if they don't look quite right and you can play with the colors if you don't want right them quite right then hit insert and after you do that it will show up right here then after you do that you want to save the image save it will probably save to your downloads give it a name It'll have a name like chart PNG1. Go and find that and copy and paste it into your lab report. Thanks so much, scientists. If you have any questions, you can always k-mail me or email me. This is Ms. R signing off on how to make a graph using Google Docs, Google Sheets. Thanks a lot.